We're also joined by Doug Brinkley, who is a professor of presidential history. And Doug, the swearing in today is required by law under the 20th Amendment. It has to be by noon on the 20th of January. But the parties and the public celebration are going to be tomorrow. How many times has that happened in American well, history? It's a, it's, it doesn't happen too often, but it's become part of our tradition now that uh, when you do a, a swearing in, Ronald Reagan in 1985, for example, had to do just this was sworn in, but Sundays are football days, and the, the uh, Reagan ended up uh, actually tossing the coin for the uh, Super Bowl that later that afternoon via vid video to Stanford. So um, today you have football going on. I'm sure the president has the opportunity now to go home, watch the game, and relax. He doesn't have to move in. He's already in Washington, and his work begins. But I found this simplicity very moving because often in American history, we, we have swearing-ins that are tragedies. I mean, you have John F. Kennedy being killed in Dallas and Lyndon Johnson quickly being sworn in, or uh, Warren, when Warren Harding died and Coolidge sworn in. There are many examples of that. The simplicity of this, the fact that the weather's good, it, this is important that we remind ourselves today that we are all Americans. We're not Democrats, we're not Republicans, we're not independents. This is our president for a second term. You know, there's so much rancor usually in an election immediately preceding an inauguration and so much rancor after as policy starts to get made in this building behind you and I. But inauguration day is a 24 hour period when that all seems to be put away. I, one hopes so. We live in these, you know, just terrible partisan times right now. But let's put the bickering aside. I think the fun of tomorrow is going to be guessing what's the president going to say. Uh, it's going to be 50 years this year of the I Have a Dream speech of Martin Luther King, 150 years of the Emancipation Proclamation. We have this historic African-American president. Once again, he said Barack Hussein Obama today, uh, using his middle name like he did the first time around. And you just have to be touched by it. The, the story of Barack Obama is like, you know, Booker T. Washington or Martin Luther King. They're, they're stories that constantly resonate. And there's a lot of cynicism towards this president, but we, we need to uh, also just be so, so pleased that he's doing such a great professional job for our country.